I believe that one of the most important things that you could do to become a better music producer is simply to use more shortcuts. To truly and passionately be able to play with the spirit of music and let her energy flow through you whilst producing, you can't be thinking about where to find your tools. Your tools must instead become an extension of you. Your hands glancing over the keyboard decisively and fluently with as minimal of a gap between decision and execution as possible. Spending time moving back and forth between typing and using your mouse or trackpad is really a bit of a waste of energy. For no sooner has the muse visited you, she's fluttered off while you sluggishly click away at virtual buttons on the screen, lackadaisically meandering through menus and submenus, searching for the same old bloody function for the 10,000th time. So in the following video, I'm going to be showing you all of my favourite shortcuts for becoming a better music producer in Bitwig Studio 5. In order for us to be able to look at and change the shortcuts, all we're going to do is go to our settings menu and under the shortcuts, which is the final option here, we can see all of the possible things that we could map shortcuts to and all of the things that have shortcuts mapped to them. By all means, uh, change the shortcuts in Bitwig to map exactly how you like them in previous software. Or even if you don't have history with previous software, what are the things that you'd like to be able to do quicker? One other thing to know is that you can search through this by the text that will inform what it is that you're trying to do. So let's say I wanted to look at anything related to zooming. I can take this type to filter actions that I can put zoom and it's going to show me in every single one of these categories everything that relates to zooming. Next up you've also got the press keyboard to filter and this is where say for example I knew that there was a key command that was command W but I didn't know what it was say I'm here if I were to now type in here command W it's going to bring up the shortcut related to that. Sometimes things will have a variety by even by default if I go to default project mappings here you can see that this has command shift down but it also has command shift end. In this case, if I wanted to say take this uh, show device panel, by default it says that I could press D or Alt D. If I press D, there we go, I can open and close it. But if I press Alt D, I can also do the same thing. Maybe I uh, also want to do something with duplicate or do double content. Say I wanted to map this to Alt D now. So I do Alt D. You can see here that it says this shortcut has already been assigned to the action focus toggle device panel. You may need to overwrite a previous shortcut. So in that case, just make sure that the thing that you are going to be overwriting has another key command or isn't a thing that you're going to be using a key command for. So as to try my best not to make this video terribly boring by repeatedly jumping back and forth between bringing up the shortcuts browser, what I'm going to be doing is putting the actual name of the shortcut itself in the description down below. So if you want to then go in and change, say, whatever the shortcut is for insert silence, all you would do is go up here and into this first text box, type the exact name that I've put down below. So insert silence is going to get you to that shortcut where you can then add in whatever you want. Maybe I want to do something bonkers like that. Cool, brilliant. If you want to delete what's already there, you can with the X and just add it on again there. Let's look at the first category of shortcut today. And in this case, that's going to be all of those that pertain to hiding and showing a variety of parts of the Bitwig interface. Many of these are sort of toggle buttons for these down on the side. So, you know, you could show and hide the clip launcher. As I always mention, if you look down here, you can see the text hover over of what these are. So this allows you to show and hide the clip launcher, the big meters, so and forth. Um, but the way that I do this is I have all of these shortcuts for these hiding things to be the same modifier, which is Alt or Option. And then I've taken the first relevant letter of the name of what it's actually doing and just added that onto the Alt. So say, for example, I wanted to bring up my sends uh, or hide my sends. Sorry, it, logically, it would just be Alt S. I can bring them back and forth in the same way. Maybe I want to see my return channels. I can press R. Maybe I'd like to hide the big mixer, Alt-M. Maybe I'd like to see the clip view, Alt-C. Maybe I'd like to get rid of this sort of in and out section, the in and out panel. I'm going to press Alt-I. Maybe I don't want to see the devices anymore, Alt-D. 
So being able to do all of this with just simple key commands can be a really great way of speeding up your process and say for example I'm mixing a song now and I really don't need to be seeing any of these clips, well it would make sense for me to get rid of the clips and bring up the big mixer. I just did that by pressing Alt-C and Alt-M and this just is a very very quick workflow that allows me to just you know, show and hide what I need to see so as to not give my brain massive fatigue. Also I've got I is just open inspector. I think that might actually be default, but again, when you're mixing, sometimes it's nice to get rid of all of that extra text. I've got the command F, uh, which is just the same as in Ableton. So uh, I think by default, it's just B in Bitwig, but I've set it to be command F. If I would like to uh, go to the automation view, all I have to do is press A. If I'd now like to look at the device view, I'm gonna press D. And if I'd then like to suddenly, if I go here so we can actually see an instrument, I'm on D. If I'd like to now edit the clip, I press E, D to go back, A to automate. Similarly, on the left-hand side here, if I'd like to go to the project panel, I press P. I can open and close it by just double tapping it. Then the output monitoring is O. Another thing that can be quite cool is when you've opened up uh, a bunch of notes in here, Instead of having to keep stretching this up here if you want more, more space, I have it set so that all you have to do is press Shift E and it will take you from the Arrange View MIDI clip window to this Edit View. Many instruments have two views, uh, or we could call it, say, an expanded view. I've got this set to Shift V for Toggle Expanded Device View. So if I press Shift V, you can see it brings up the expanded view, which would be the same as pressing this down here. One thing that you may notice, though, is that this is a sort of small pop-up window. And if I were to press the actual button here, it, it brings it up in this neat little format. I could, of course, undock it to get the same result. But it's very strange how when we use the Shift V command, it opens it in this undocked view. Although before I continue, I just want to point out the one benefit of this is that you can open two of them, say. And if you hold down the Maximize button on your Mac, you can then actually uh, move these windows into taking up double the space. So you can get really nice editing control here, uh, which I think can be quite wonderful. If you do want to have these be in this sort of docked format, you know, like this, rather than this silly uh, hovering thing. I'm sure this is actually a bug and it would be worth uh, reporting this to Bitwig. But if in fact you were to open it by hand here and then undock it, if you press Shift V now and you close it, it's going to open in the opposite format that now it opens in that docked view. I've got a clip here of a certain length. In this case it's one bar. Say I'd like to have two bars of this, but for the first bar to copy the second bar. There's a very useful shortcut called Double Content. In this case, I have it set to Shift D. So if I click the clip and press Shift D, boom. I can keep doubling and doubling and doubling. Uh, unfortunately, there's no half content, which uh, is, I suppose, okay in this sense. This works also quite nicely with audio. So if I were to take some sort of loop here, if I want double the amount of kicks, I can just press Shift D, and you can see that it's copy and pasted it across. Every time I press it, it's timesing it by two. Maybe we would also like to change the speed of this. Maybe I want to speed it up so that it happens twice as fast. And if that's the case, I'm going to want to scale it by 50%. And I have that set to the left square bracket. So that's effectively just halving the length of the clip. If I press it again, now we're getting even faster. I could also scale it 200%, which will slow it down, effectively halving it. Um, so this doesn't have to just be on audio, you can see that this works on MIDI too. Super handy. If I were to highlight all of these notes, and I would like to make all of them shorter, well there's another key command, and in this case it's called scale each. And the difference between scale and scale each is it takes every single note individually into account. I have that set to shift and square brackets. So if I press exactly the same way as before, I was being able to scale it by 250%. or If I add the shift modifier, now I can increase and decrease the length of those notes, which can be a really great way of automatic, like very quickly editing things. Similarly, it works with audio. If I were to have all of these chopped in their onsets, I could make all of these kicks either twice as fast, or I can actually make them individually twice as fast. You can see here now that I've made some of these notes too short and some of them too long. 
If I were to highlight them all and try and do that shift thing, you can see that some of these are longer than others. Maybe I want all of them to touch, regardless of where they are or how long they were. I want all of them to continue from where they start up until the next note. In that case, we're going to use the Make Legato shortcut. I have that set to Command, Shift, and L. This also works with uh, audio. Oftentimes, you might want to change the gain of something. And I've got that set to Alt, Down, brings it down 1 dB. You can see down here that all I have to do is click it, and I can press Alt, Down to bring down the clip. If I press Alt, Up, I go up by 1 dB. I can also add in the modifier Shift, and that will bring it down 6 dB. So this is a great way of being able to bring up and down the volume of things quickly. We could also do it here with the MIDI notes. But I can highlight all of the notes and I can bring the clip volume down by 1 dBs, or of course if I add the shift key modifier I can bring it up. Similar to how we had the uh, gain change, sometimes you also might want to go in and change the pitch of something. Maybe I'd like to pitch it up an octave. And maybe I'd like to pitch it down four or five. So I've got it set to command and up. If I press command up, you can see that we go up by one semitone. So while it's playing, I can manually uh, just do it up and down. I don't even have to have the inspector panel open. I could do this just based off of ear. Um, but I can also then add the shift modifier to do it at a whole octave. So I can go down two, maybe want to go up, down an octave. If I were to select just this note and press Command-0, I'm going to zoom in to just seeing that, especially if I go into my sort of detailed editor view here. If I now press Command-0 again, uh, I sort of jump back out to seeing everything. So I can jump in and out on specific notes. Maybe I want to look at this one. I can just press Command-0, and as soon as I press it out again, it's going to take me back to the full length of the clip. If I make this clip shorter and say, now we want to look at just this note, as I jump out again, now we're going to get to that. This is quite handy because it means that you can actually highlight a couple of notes and just zoom in to see them and edit them. This works with audio as well. So if I had some sort of pop loop here and I wanted to really work on this little piece here, if we slice this at onset, so if I were to just press Command-0, I can zoom in, do my work, make sure that everything's nice and tight, and press Command-0 to get back out again. Another important category of key command are those that pertain to the beat grid. If I want to make the grid smaller, I have it set to Command-1. You can see that that's now created the ability to draw in 30 seconds notes. I could go to 64th, 128, and actually Bitwig allows you to go really rather ridiculously low here. Um, command-2 goes the opposite direction. Maybe I'd like to, instead of be looking at just straight eighth notes, look at eighth note triplets. In that case, I'm going to bring up the Command-3, and you can see that that's changed down here to 3. If I press it again, we're going to go to 5, and then we go to 7, and then it jumps back to regular. Also, by default, I have things snapping. If I want to turn off that snapping, all I have to do is press Command-4. By default, I'm looking at eighth notes here. As I zoom in, it's not really very helpful to be looking at eighth notes when I have to scroll so far to the left or right to even see the beginning of one. So Bitwig has what's called the adaptive beat grid. You can see here, if you open up the menu, there's the option for the adaptive beat grid in both the arrangement panel and then down here as well. It's automatically on. And you'll see what that means is that we're currently looking at 16th notes. You can see that each one of these is a 16th note. If I zoom in, look what's happening down here. It's automatically breaking apart these pieces and it works both up here. So we're only seeing eighth notes. If I bring this down on again, we can see that we can now get down to those smaller beat grid values. One thing that I would say is smart to get rid of as a default shortcut is if we look here, if I go to the default mappings, S is set to toggle snap. And toggle snap is this button. That just means that uh, the notes will snap to whatever it is here. If I don't want my notes to snap to things, well, all I have to do is press shift. The, the reason why I say to turn this off is because you will accidentally press S. And when you press S, you're going to turn this off by accident, and this is just going to be like an irritating thing that you constantly find yourself being like, wait, why are my notes not sticking? And it's because you accidentally pressed S. If you highlight the area of time that you'd like to duplicate, I have it set to Command, Shift, and D for duplicate. That means I can just push this section out. If I'd now like to remove that time or delete that time, so to speak, I'd like to get rid of everything from here to here and have this pulled back, I have that set to Command-Shift and Delete key. 
There's also the option of inserting silence. I can press Command Shift and I on the timeline view up here. So if I press this there and Command Shift I, I can push it through in exactly the amount of time that I highlight. You can of course use your mouse to move around when you're playing your project file. Maybe I want to play from here. Uh, but if we are in the realm of shortcuts, one thing that can be quite cool is being able to move your cursor back and forth around without having to use your mouse. And to be able to move it, say, by a specific bar length. In this case, maybe I'm playing and I'd like to skip forward in the track, skip back in the track. I have that set to full stop and comma. Um, if I add the qualifier of a shift, that's going to skip it back eight bars or forward eight bars. A lot of you will know that I love cue markers. Uh, setting cue markers, I believe, is a really great way of being able to keep track of what's happening in your song and therefore actually make it easier to finish it. Maybe I want to set a bunch of them. In comes the wonderful key command of just uh, backslash or the question mark. And by just pressing that, I can actually set up a cue marker in these various places. What's also quite cool is, along with being able to jump around by one bar or eight bar increments, we now have the option of using the Alt modifier in exactly the same keys to move back and forward between cue markers. So if I press Option and Full Stop, or Alt and Full Stop, I can jump between these little guys. You might have a number of groups. Maybe you'd like to be able to quickly open and close all of the groups. Well, I have a key command which is Command and Left. Command left opens and closes. It's a toggle based button as opposed to one for open and one for close. I have a cool little shortcut set here which is command shift and right will take you into the group which allows you to see only the clips in that group as well as if you bring up the little mixer view here on either way only the view of that uh, selection of tracks which can be really handy although you will still hear everything else that's playing in the project file. This is a very neat way of working on things. We would expect that if it was command shift right to get in that it would be command shift, shift left to get out. But for some reason it doesn't seem to work. And that's because if you have a clip selected as opposed to one of these channels, uh, it's not going to work. So you need to either click on one of these to get in and out, or I have it set to if I press a T it takes me to the track header. So wherever I am I'll just press T and then I'll press command shift left to get out. I've got a number of clips here in my clip view and perhaps you might want to create a new scene out of some of the clips that you're playing. Command, Alt and I. And you'll see that that just creates one directly below. If you have a lot of things muted or you have a lot of instrument channels recording and you'd like to perhaps turn them all off at once, I have it set to, for the arm, I have it set to Shift A and that will turn off the record arm. And for mute, I have it set to Shift M. That will just turn off all of the mutes. Now, the last little trick I want to show you today that's super fun, super useful, particularly if you have two project files open next to each other that you want to bounce back and forth to, it would be cool if we could set up some sort of key command that allowed us to just directly go to the previous or next project file and uh, enable its audio engine. I have that set to control and then the square brackets again. So if I were to press control and left square bracket, not only does it take me to that previous project file, but it also then uh, turns on the audio engine. Let's try it again. I'm going to press control and then the right square bracket and it's going to take us to that new to that other project, Fearless Lover, and engage the audio engine. So three, two, one, boom, now it's engaged. Well folks, that's sadly all we have time for today, but I do hope that this video has been useful. If you enjoyed it, then please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and smash that notifications bell too to keep up to date with all of my future videos. If you'd like to take your support a step further, then please consider becoming a member of my music production and creative mindset community, Tash Tribe, the link to which is in the description down below. But in the meantime, happy Thursday, and happy creating.